call the December USD 350 Board of Education meeting to order. <coughs> Welcome all the visitors. Welcome. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? There are not. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion to approve. Mr. President, I need to approve the agenda as presented. So moved and seconded to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. 6 0. Consent agenda. Um, on your, your documents, on your uh, iPad there, you have uh, in the supporting documents 1 to 22, you have the, uh, the minutes and then the bills and then the the board financial statement and the activity fund report are separate documents, so if you need help finding those, um, it'll be separate documents that weren't sent out in the packet. Everybody get a chance to review the packet. Mr. President, I move the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Second question. Move and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. Are there any patron comments tonight? All right. Now we'll move on to the business agenda. First up, architect proposal. We have uh, representatives from uh, PBA Architects that have been in discussions with them for some time about uh, our facility improvements. Uh, uh, they've submitted two proposals. One is for the HVAC system here at the library. Uh, the other is for the main building improvements. Um, I've sent those to you in an email and uh, uh, they were in the area and uh, they said they could be here tonight um, to answer any questions. Uh, Clark Simpson, now in Milbrandt. Uh, you want to just take us through a little bit on that, uh, the one proposal uh, for the main buildings? Okay. Uh, what is proposed there? Yeah. What we did on the, well, essentially the restroom and classroom office remodel, and it was kind of, as we started, we started, when I first started talking to John, it was just restrooms that kind of kept, morphing into different and different schemes of things that you may need done in the building. That's partly why I broke this down to sort of two phases and the and phase one to do a, a code review of the building and determine what is your actual occupancy count to determine the, the required number of fixtures you have to have. Because one of the issues you've got is several of your restrooms don't meet current ADA standards the easiest way to get it to meet ADA is to remove a fixture so that you have the clearance around the one fixture. However, if the code won't, doesn't allow you to reduce the number of fixtures, that creates a problem. And so we need to determine what the code's going to allow us to do before we can start recommending how we need to remodel those restrooms. And that's partly why we kind of broke it in two phases because budgetarily, once we determine the scope of what each restroom needs to have done to it or can have done to it, we can get you a, a rough estimate or a opinion of what the probable construction cost will be, and then you can determine, yeah, that's something we would like to have done and do it now, or let's put it down off and we'll do it down the road. We know what we can do, so it doesn't all, and then we'll actually come back and provide a fee then to do the extent of the work that you want done instead of us giving you a fee to do it all and then you not be able to afford, you know, financially be able to do all the work at once, you only want to do half of it. That way it's, our fee represents the scope of the work you really need to have done. And that's why we broke it the way we did. Was we need to get in there and figure out kind of what it is you really can and can't do before we can recommend what it is you, got, you know, options for you to, to proceed to go forward. And then there's uh, the classroom remodel for the fire marshals, fairly a simple, straightforward issue. We'll just need to modify 
And again, when we make the revision, the recommendations there, we'll not only fix the issues for the fire marshal, but we'll also make those two classrooms ADA accessible so you don't have the ADA issues that you currently have with the entrances, along with when we move or look at moving the district office down to where the elementary office currently is at. Well, and what we're talking about with that uh, fire marshal issue, the old library, uh, we've got those two doors, be Mrs. Hacker's room and Mrs. Uh, Witt's room now. Uh, does everybody kind of know where I'm talking about? <coughs> on the north end of the high school area. Uh, it's the old library, and it was one, one double door entrance, Well, they split that into two classrooms. And that wall is paneling, the fire marshal said, you need to remove the paneling because it's a flammable wall covering, you can't have that. So it's easy enough just to come in, remove that, put sheetrock on. Well, the way that was designed, the doors closed so tight to add even half-inch sheetrock on there, the doors won't close because the, the doorknobs rub, almost rub on the walls. So it just wasn't designed where well, you can't make those doors wider. So what we'll have to do is kind of come in to the classrooms and put doors maybe on the side, just rework that. And really all that comes down to is so we can do that wall properly and get the sheetrock on the wall. And the doors need replaced anyway. Those operate horribly. So it's something that needs done anyway. And it's something we had anticipated doing this summer with the sheetrock once we got to looking at it. We weren't able to do that. So when we're talking about in the classroom model, remodel, that's what we're talking about. And then the office, uh, we've discussed about uh, perhaps using one of the classrooms and remodeling that for an office, to utilize other classroom space. And then the restrooms, we're talking about all eight of them. So we'll look at all eight of them. If we decide, well, we don't want to spend that much money, after they do their analysis, then we can pair that back. Say, well, maybe we'll just do half the restrooms now and move forward with that in phase two. Any questions for these guys about where we're headed with this? Or? Well, what was you talking about the code? What's the code? Well, the, the building code requires a certain number based on the number of students you have in the building. Well, the catch is it's not your FTE, but it's actually based on the size of the rooms or the classrooms, how many students can actually fit in there. <coughs> and so you have to get a count of all the spaces that are used for classrooms. And then you look at spaces that are for office. There's a figure they use, a square footage number. So you end up doing a essentially a square footage of the building and dividing each room by a factor to determine the occupancy load, which will then tell you how many fixtures that you're required to have in the building to meet the current code. Okay, and you're talking about fixtures, what's fixture? Well, uh, that's a toilet, oh. toilets and sinks, okay. and, yeah, they, and they have a number for, yeah, and what they, essentially in an educational facility, and I shouldn't do things off the top of my head, but I think males are, it's one for, one per 150, I believe, and then like females, it's one per 65. But there's a different number for boys than there is girls. And, and typically what you do, and the code officials usually will buy it, is you figure your total occupancy. And say your building can hold 800 students. Mm -hmm. You figure 400 girls and 400 boys, and then you calculate out the number of fixtures based on that. But you have to go through and spend, you have to analyze what spaces you have. Because if it's a storage room or a space that's not occupied, you don't have to count it. Mm -hmm. And so you have to just figure out what's used. They'll also ask you to look at your gymnasium or your auditorium. And sometimes you'll actually end up with more occupants for those than you will in your classrooms. And they'll ask you to consider which, what is the worst case scenario to determine the number of fixtures. And that's... That's why we need, we need to spend some time kind of just evaluating the building. It's not something that, unless somebody's already done the work and given you the number, <laughs> you can't just walk in and say, oh, you've got 15 well, classrooms, you only need this many toilets. Like your classroom, like, say, you have to figure what the maximum size, maximum yeah. occupants is yeah, yeah, that, you take, even though we don't have that many kids. Exactly. That, and that's, that's 
kind of yeah, the whole issue with the, the way the code officials look at it. And one of the things that we've been able to do is we look at that number there, and then if, if your FTE and your and that is half of that, we'll we'll sit down. A lot of times we'll sit down with them and say, okay, this is what the building potentially could hold, but this is for the last five years been the average. Will you allow us to say go if it's half the number, add ten percent and use that as a number? A lot of times they'll allow us to negotiate with them to get a and what they're looking for is a reasonable number of fixtures so that if you have an event or something like that, that you know people aren't standing in line waiting to use the restroom. And that's that's the biggest issue. And that's the most common thing to do for ADA remodel is, is is you remove fixtures. That's the quickest and easiest way to get it to do. But if your facility is underserved, utilized or underserved in terms of the fixture count, by taking fixtures out, you just make things worse in the sense of you have a large gathering or a large event, it just takes longer to get people through it. Mm -hmm. that's and that's part of the phase. Yeah, that's that part of that phase yeah. one is is figuring all that stuff out so that we can come back and say, okay, this, this is cool. this is the number you can actually handle. This is the number you actually have. You know, these are your options of what we can do remodel wise based on that. We just I, just looking at the plan. You know, I, you've got X number of classrooms, but that didn't. I haven't sat down to really yeah. spend the time to analyze it to determine. You know, where, where we need to be. Because I know, well, when we walked through, we did look at the fixture counts in each of the restrooms. And that was my initial concern was, I don't know that you have too many fixtures. Sometimes you'll have buildings that will actually have more fixtures than are needed. And then you can, we can reduce count fairly easily. But I just don't know that right now. What's your time frame on phase one? Um, you give us go. I'm hoping that something. Well, of course, hopefully here in probably a couple of weeks we could get uh, down. We could at least get the the code review done and know the count, and then probably another week or two we could have options for the remodel to you. So really, by the first of the year, we could have something back to you. And then we're going to need to move fairly quickly if we want to try to. You know, get all this put together and yeah. the, all the design work done and yeah, bid and everything to get the work started. Yeah, if you want to do the work over the summer, and you really, ideally, we want to put the documents and get those done so we can have them out to bid in March, so that you, at your May board meeting, you can approve the contractor so that you can get them rolling and get materials ordered to be able to, to work over the, the summer. Thoughts. All right, if we're going to proceed, that's what we need to do. First of all, be step one. And then again on uh, phase two, you know, my question to Clark was, can you give me a ballpark number for phase two? Well. It's tough to do that when we don't know exactly what we're going to proceed with, like you mentioned before. Well, one of the issues is, is we've talked is if we're just remodeling the restrooms internally and we aren't expanding into any other spaces, I might need a structural engineer. But if we, one of the thoughts was is if we move the off or the district office from where it's at down to the elementary building, that's a space that potentially could be re renovated to restroom so that you could get the boys restroom that's in the basement up to where it's accessible. Well, we may end up having to cut a hole in a wall that's a bearing wall or something like that and I'll need the assistance of a structural engineer to put the lintel in. Well, if we're not needing to cut a doorway in, then I don't want to have fees for him to do that in there. And that's, that's the part that makes it difficult without knowing exactly the extent until I get conceptually what we're looking to do. Then we can give you a hard number. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the architects? If 
not. Uh, do you have anything to add? No, my recommendation would be that we uh, approve that tonight, uh, uh, the letter of agreement with PBA to move forward on in phase one. Hopefully by the first of the year have, have some more info and we can get rolling. Yeah, if we could get that back uh, by our next meeting. When's your next meeting? First Monday of January. So once you give your recommendation and everything else, do you just kind of drop out or do you stay involved? No, in I, process? we'll stay with you from start to finish through construction. So you're yeah. you're kind of a general contractor. No, I'm what I'm in, I'm an architect. I'm an architect. What I do is we'll design what the scope of work is, and then I will oversee what the contractor does to make sure he follows the documentation of what we've asked them to do. Uh, our my role again is to look after your interests when you hire a contractor to do the work. So and typically a contractor, when you bid a job, is looking to figure out the most efficient way to get the scope of work done. Sometimes that, you know, especially if it's a public bid, that means we'll, they'll try to cut corners and our role is to make sure they don't. <laughs> and you, you're you involved in that bidding process. Oh yeah, absolutely. We ever see that and that's, yeah, that's... Mr. President, I move that the board approves the agreement with the uh, PDA architects for phase one of the main building improvements. Okay. So move and second to approve the agreement with PBA Architects to phase one of the main building improvements. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Um, let me mention while we're on that, we have two proposals. The other one is for the library HVAC system. Uh, really, we've you know looked at a lot of options on that one. My recommendation is that. Uh, I think we can handle that. Uh, for, we're talking about one-to-one -one replacement of equipment. Uh, we'll handle that here. Not that I don't have confidence in these gentlemen, but uh, uh, for dollars that we're going to spend on it, I think our best bet is to handle that ourselves. So. Okay. Anything else for PBA? Gentlemen, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Moving on to the superintendent's contract. Um, this is uh, on the on the uh, board business calendar to discuss. Um, we've had my evaluation, and, uh, and I've got a two-year contract, and plan would be to roll that two-year contract over um, at the January meeting uh, if the board so chooses. So I included the, my contract in the uh, in the packet there. Uh, the only uh, cause of concern with this, and we've discussed that some, is the, me being paid for my vacation days uh, and being transparent with with that, because some of that just ends up being paid as you know part of my salary and. Uh, we have that weird situation. If I take off an hour early, do I take an hour of vacation? Uh, but if I'm in for half a day on Sunday in that same week, do I get more vacation? It just, I, I, it's not a, it's not a, I mean, I work to get the job done. And I think in the interest of being uh, uh, transparent, I would feel more comfortable if that was just part of my salary, uh, and it wouldn't be all of it. But I'm not going to take 25 days of vacation every year. That's not going to happen. Um, you know, I work to get the job done. And even if I do take a week of vacation, I'm back working on the weekend. Or, you know, you know, it's, it's just a job that needs to be done. So uh, I'm not asking for a decision here. Uh, just something I'd like you to consider. Uh, we would have to negotiate what that amount would be. Uh, again, it, of course, wouldn't be the full 25 days. But And I've kind of been uncomfortable with that when... We say this is my salary, and in the end, I'm paid a few thousand dollars more than that because of my vacation. Um, uh, one tough thing for the board would be if, if that does take place, that transition would be, it looks like the superintendent's getting a large raise. Uh, 
uh, really would be being paid roughly the same. You just wouldn't be separated out into vacation and uh, uh, salary. So uh, the rest of it I feel comfortable with. I'm not How about the insurance side? Are you along with the same mm -hmm. as the teachers? So yeah. 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 Since that's going to be a big issue in the yeah. next year or two. Yeah. And I think it should stay that way. Uh, sometimes I look at things differently if we pay the uh, you know administrators more on uh, insur health insurance than we do other employees. That can become an issue. Well, that sounds reasonable. We need an executive session to discuss that now. We, we, need need to to take action. we don't need to take action now. You can just uh, consider it for the next month and then. Uh, well, we, we have can to approve it next meeting, though, or? Yeah, that, that, that's we'll what I'd like. it next meeting and approve we'll it as amended, or what? We could talk about it today. We yeah, we can talk about it. And we can do one of two things. We can go in now, uh, briefly, while we're on this topic, come back to open session, and we can save it until the end. Uh, I have one other executive session item during the budget discussion, but I think we should do that during that item rather than at the end of the meeting. So, other than that, I didn't have other executive session items. We didn't. Unless somebody else had one. Would you like to discuss yes, it now? Yeah. Okay. If we don't have any other ones, then we'll okay. Uh, your uh, motion would be on section D there on page four of the agenda. Uh, Did you say we're going to have to do an executive session after the OT? During the, the budget, during the budget discussion. Ten minutes. Ten minutes on the catch this. Maybe on five. Okay. We're uh, we're on this topic. We can do it right now. And get it over. Okay. Mr. President, I move the board going to the big session to discuss personnel matters in order to protect the privacy of non elected personnel with the board and the superintendent. To be included for uh, ten minutes. Okay. Second. You want the superintendent? I can always talk to you for part of it. Well, well, I can. I can. I can. I can. I can. I can. So move and second go in executive session. Discuss the uh, public personnel for ten minutes with the board and superintendent. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Six zero. One. Financial auditor. Mm -hmm. auditor. Uh, this, I don't have a recommendation here, but I am looking for some direction from the board. We've used Adams, Brown, Baron, and Ball for some time. Uh, the cost of our 2012-13 audit was $9,580. So we paid them this year. Uh, I think it's a good practice to uh, send out a request for proposals and. Uh, uh, you'll get some get some bids on that. Uh, I'm not terribly unhappy with them. Uh, I also think it's maybe a good practice to uh, use another firm periodically. Um, not that anything bad is going on there, but uh, do you know how many years we used them? I don't. In row. At least four. We've used them the entire time I've been here, and I've been through. Well, you've been for a long time. You guys have been on here. Do other have you talked to other superintendents to find out local? Not a lot. Uh, it's not way out of line. I've talked to two, but you know, whenever you ask for bids, I think pencils get a little sharper. I don't have a problem with getting other bids. It's just good business practice. And I don't want to do that every year. I think it's I think it's good to find somebody and stick with them for a few years at least. And we do it every 
two or three years or something. Okay. But if the board doesn't have a problem with that, I'll pursue that. And see about that for. If we take bids, are we required to take the lowest bid? Or can we, can no, this is a service. Uh, for services, we don't have to. Uh, we don't have to bid at all. We're not bound by bid on that. It's like attorneys, architects, and those things. We make a judgment decision on those things. Any problems with looking? Oh, I think it hurts to lot for bids. We see the remainder of an office in town. Yeah, they're local. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you can bring your plan back. Mm -hmm. Negotiations team. Uh, volunteers. A couple of volunteers. I think one volunteered by being absent, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, don't do it. <laughs> oh, I think they used to be good. <clears throat> we'll just need a we need a couple of volunteers and a, a motion to approve those volunteers. So. How are you feeling, Stan? Tired. <laughs> <laughs> You've done this. We need at least one that's done it before. Yeah, and that's what they're doing. And I've got two down there. It's not necessary that we have two. And there could be stand on the for a couple of years. As many as three. Would anyone like to do it? Carl? I nominate Stan Williams. The new board still trying to come away out. Still so. trying to try to, yeah, yeah. Stan and Vance. Stan can, you but can train out. Vance. How's that? Okay. You just threw him on the bus. <laughs> well, why not? Well, Mr. Why, Prescott, why not? I'm in the board approved Vance and Stan as our negotiating team. Fair second. Second. I'm going to vote against it so he knows what I did and what mine did. So it's down on paper. I mean, right. I, I, I got to wait to see this vote then. I don't right. think you'll do it. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be good. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve Stan Vance to serve on the board's negotiations team next year. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. <laughs> really, I've, I've been a part of, well, I observed the negotiations two years ago and was a part of them last year and gone very smooth. Yeah. Teachers are good to work with. So. It's, it's, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Stan. Thanks. Carl. Thanks. Thanks. You bet. Mm -hmm. here. All right, senior release application. Uh, we have none, so we have no action here. Okay. High school secretary position. Uh, Susan Lewis is uh, going to retire. She submitted a letter of resignation. Uh, we'll have to accept that at the end of the meeting. Uh, she's got a date of uh, January 15th on there. She's willing to help out. So that's, she just put that down because she had to have a date. So um, uh, my recommendation is to go ahead and hire that position full time as soon as we can, which probably means by the time we advertise it for a couple of weeks and get interviews, the first of the year is really even a little tight. It, it takes a while to get those things done. Uh, so then we would have that person working to help cover offices. They can kind of learn what goes on in the central office and elementary office as well and spend, uh, spend a lot of time with Mrs. Lewis learning what she does with the activity fund and the computer system and all of that and the launch. Uh, and, uh, and then at some point, Mrs. Lewis would uh, maybe just work uh, a reduced schedule for a period of time, maybe come in a couple of days a week, or something like that. That person would then move full time into that office, uh, and then, uh, and then eventually Susan would go ahead and uh, uh, 
changing it up entirely. So she's willing to work with us. Um, it's kind of open-ended here. Uh, the re reason we need to, I guess, take action on this because we're really adding a position uh, for a period of time. Um, so it is it is extra money, uh, but we're talking about uh, a couple of months. So depending on how things go. So that's what I'm asking for, that we go ahead and uh, hire that position as soon as we can full time. Uh, salary is not determined yet. Uh, that wage is not determined yet. Uh, what does full time actually mean? I mean, do they work during the summertime? Too? No, no, no. It, this would be uh, eight hours a day for 40 weeks, roughly. You know, kids are in session 36 weeks, so. <coughs> It's a, it's a few weeks extra before and after. So, so they don't get, they don't work during the summer? No, no, this position isn't paid all summer. And uh, do they get uh, insurance or not? They do. It gets insurance, but it's a reduced rate. So whatever that percentage of the year that's worked, I don't know, it's roughly 80%. 80%. Uh, so they can get paid 80% of the benefit that everybody else does. Susan has been working full time now, has she? Mm -hmm. Not, not she during the summer. Hours. Mm -hmm. She just came in earlier and left earlier. Yeah, she comes in she at, at 6.15 okay. or so. And monitors the bus routes on the radio. And so this person would be doing the same job description or are you going yeah. to start moving people around? Yeah. For a period of time that Susan would still be doing her job, this person would be observing her, working with her own parts of that and covering lunches, the ongoing problem we have of office coverage, which is why we're looking at the office remodel. Uh, that person would be used to help help cover the district office and the elementary office. It would be kind of nice to have that too, where they can see kind of what goes on in each office. And, uh, is it kind of hard to find somebody to do that? I mean, to, to work just part of the year and not work yeah. the whole year? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it'd take a, somebody with, you know, yeah. don't need really the income or something. Yeah. Or, uh, Sometimes a mother with, they, you know, it's kids going to school and can be home with them in the summer. Yeah, it is, it is a problem trying to find uh, uh, aid positions and secretary positions that are, you know, have several weeks out for the summer. And she'd be willing to stay past that date that she wrote? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. If needed. Yeah. Just until this person's broken, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I move the board approve opening a position for a high school secretary replacement. Second motion. I move and second the board approve an opening opening a position for a high school secretary replacement. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion 36 0. Disposal of excess property. <coughs> Whenever we get rid of property, we need to have board approval. Uh, I have to get rid of it the way you tell me to get rid of it. So some of these things might seem like a minor item, uh, why we really need to have this as a board agenda item, but whenever we dispose of district property, it needs to come to you all. So these fan-shaped backboards, uh, I recommend we, we uh, just sell them on a first-come, first-served basis. Um, I recommend just putting $75 a goal on for the random backboard and uh, uh, get rid of them. No, kind of a pull, do they? No. Well, they're worth 75 bucks or not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I so think I can I don't mind, but start the middle of construction. Leave it up to the discretion. How many you got? Mr. Fire. Uh, we have six glass ones and then uh, one steel. Steel? Yeah. Yeah, 
It is. It's not aluminum. It is. We don't need any yeah. playground. Uh, no, we're good on playground. Uh, uh, really, I'd feel more comfortable if we needed one to put up an aluminum one anyway out there. Um, and we'll we'll keep one. To, we've got another spot in the old gym that we could put one up. Just as another goal on the side, on the wall, that one had come down a few years ago. On the south side? Well, we're, that's all. On the scoreboard side. Okay. This glass is glass? Or are they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it a glass glass? Mm -hmm. Just thinking the Hudson Park might be a useful, but I don't want to put glass up there. I don't want it to be in a kid's. Some shooting Yeah, the steel one, maybe. Yeah. I'll have to look, see what's up there. Yeah. Entertain a motion. Mr. President, I move the board to the disposal of basketball goals as discussed. Second. We'll do the second to approve the disposal of basketball goals as discussed. Is there any further discussion? Not all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. <coughs> Moving on to the budget. Um, on your documents there, um, I've got three separate documents there. They're all it's cash balances something. Uh, cash balance is 2013. What's up on that? This is all stuff we've seen before, but I wanted to revisit it because it applies to this conversation. I want to make sure we're all on the same page with it. This was our cash balance picture last July, uh, previous July, and then this last July. So over the course of that budget year, and I look at these different funds. These are operating funds. Well, they're all operating funds, but this is money I consider spendable. And that's what I'm concerned about when we look at what did our cash balance do. This number down here is the number the auditor gives us. It says, hey, our cash balance is doing great. You know, we, this is next to nothing on the size of our budget. But this is what concerns me because this is money we can use at our discretion uh, to fund our programs, pay salaries, and those things. Now, I thought general fund was that way. Well, it is, but we spend all of that and it goes into these other funds. So that's spent. Same thing with supplemental general, we spend all of that. Sometimes there's cash left in there because we collect more taxes than we have budget. So really this is zero, all that does is affect our tax rate for the next year. So this is the money we can access and spend. Uh, we'll end up spending it, we'll just collect less, less taxes. Uh, this money's not ours to spend. Title, federal funds, uh, that's negative just because of the way the year fell. That's just reimbursed to us. When we spend it, we get it from the federal government. Um, and the library, that's some uh, the carryover money from years that we'll spend down, uh, used for that fund. Activity fund, uh, that's uh, uh, money that belongs to student council and junior class and those things. And then our bond and interest, that's only used to pay for our bond payment. Uh, so this next year, our cash balance is going to take a huge hit because we paid that off. That cash is gone. That's a good thing, but this total number is going to take a huge <coughs> drop because of that. Doesn't, doesn't, it's not a bad thing. It, it just is what it is. So I look at this, this here, and we lost... Uh, 68000 in that last year. So basically we overspent by 68000 Capital outlay is spendable. We can access that and use it however we think uh, we need to, but we can only spend on facilities and equipment and those things. So this is spendable, but uh, it's more for big projects and things. Um, this down here shows three-year uh, average what happened with our cash balance. So on that spendable amount, that top part, the one that I really look at that really matters, 
uh, in the, each of those three years that that was the trend. So, and then our total balance. This I don't even really look at that. It doesn't really matter because I'm concerned with what we can spend. So the average here of the last three years has been about fifty-five thousand. Okay. We all know we can't continue to do that. Any questions about this situation? So I want you all to be comfortable with, with what's going on there. So we've got a budget hole to fill. Average of the last three years, about 55000 We can't continue that. And some time ago we talked about this. Um, what, what would I recommend we be at? So once we stabilize that, well, what should we have for our cash balances? Well, all of this I just analyzed, and the number I want you to see here, I can send this to you again. I haven't changed anything. But on that special, uh, uh, on the spendable funds, a good goal I think would be 620000 Now, all of these have a reason for that. You know, it's tied to something special ed. We ought to have a year of payment to the special ed co-op and so on. I'm not going to go through all of those. Um, and also I looked at, uh, I think I sent this to you in a Friday note. At some point it's been a while. But I compared what our spendable cash balance in those specific funds, how does that compare to other districts? Now these ones I picked, of course, these two are in the county, Stafford and Maxville, our neighbors. And then these four were from the Center for Innovative School Leadership, that study they did on efficiency. Those are the four schools they identified as uh, our peer districts. Similar enrollment, um, uh, similar, I guess, student achievement, um, demographic makeup. Uh, so similar districts to ours. <laughs> now, I could only access the 2012 information when I put this together. Uh, so, this is a year old, but um, Stafford's cash balance is, is huge, and I'm not sure why that is. Uh, I haven't talked to anybody over there about why is that so much bigger. Um, and then, you can see these. Uh, balances there for those four. The average is 650,000. So I think the 620,000 is a pretty good target based on what I think our funds should be and what uh, peer districts are uh, where we're at there. Now, all this budget talk, we don't collect money to save it. You know, our job is to educate the kids and meet the needs of kids. So we're going to have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of what ifs now with the school finance lawsuit and uh, the income tax uh, reductions. Our enrollment is always a, uh, we're not sure. Uh, we can't just continue to put money away for a rainy day. We have to educate our kids now. And we also have to assure that we can educate kids down the road. Uh, so we're, we're not just always looking at, oh, we don't know what's gonna happen, we need to sock away a lot of money. We need to spend that money, we've collected it from taxpayers. but. We've collected it from taxpayers to educate kids. That's what we need to use it for. But uh, we do need to be prudent and make sure we can make payroll. Uh, we're not in danger of not making payroll. Uh, but that's our situation. So we're looking at $55,000 average over the past three years uh, budget whole, I guess. Does that make sense? I mean, none of this is really new, but... This is what was in your packet on page 33. And we had talked about this uh, last meeting, I believe, or not, or, yeah, last meeting. We had our official numbers that we submitted to the state. We have our weighted enrollment. Count all the kids, count all the vocational weighting, the at-risk funding, all of that. We end up with uh, 598. And that's after all the, the extra weightings for all the extra things. Um, and this is not including special ed, because I don't even count that. That's on the next line, because that just comes to us and we pay it to the co-op. So I don't even figure that in the budget. I mean, we do figure it in the budget, but I don't 
consider that if we're getting more money. We're not going to get that money unless it's due to the co-op. Back up <coughs> to what you had up there before. All of them had special ed and a number <coughs> for your spendable. So is that a different than what you just said there? No. I may, maybe I said it wrong. Or this no, one is yeah, comparable to the, the other ones. Yeah, that's kind of odd to see all those. Because you <coughs> have the various. special ed and this one's special ed. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> what about so it? You, that's past through money? It is. Okay, so. Now, now almost all of it is. We can use some of that to pay transportation. Um, and. Uh, Julian, is there anything else we would pay? Maybe some materials? Yeah, well, see, but it's, it's so minor. So but, you know, I was looking so at those long. numbers, and <coughs> you know, that's why these other districts had so much more spendable <coughs> because that number was way bigger than what ours is. And ours so needs to be bigger. Yes. Yeah. See, but if it's past through, how can it be bigger? Well, if, if, like, know, it's not all pass through. <coughs> it's, it's uh, the uh, the assessment, the local assessment. If you recall, our local assessment jumped by fifteen thousand this year. So we take money from our general fund, put it in special ed, and then that flows through. So part of it's transportation, part of it's our local assessment that we raise from our lo local taxpayers, paid to the co-op. The other part of that is the flow through money, and. Probably, the, I, don't, I don't want to quote a percent. Most of it is the yeah. flow through money. Would the Head Start program and at Stafford be part of that big number there, or is Head Start separate from that? Is that no, why it looks so odd with, with the... Uh, on with which, on the special numbers, on, When we compare ours to Stafford and they have such yeah. a large number, is that because they had Head Start in I, I in don't that, know. That's I, I couldn't even begin to I wonder if that's why. not what... Because ours is just so much lower than everybody else. Like a lot of it has to do with the fact that Maxville and Stafford have a far lower assessed valuation for their districts than what we do as a district, and so they're receiving additional state aid for a lot of different things that we don't get, which would allow them to potentially build balances. I see. Well, I thought Maxville didn't get any. Yeah, I thought they were supposed to be the wealthier. Yeah. Now, that I, okay. Stafford Maxville, is. I'm Stafford not sure is. about. Yeah. Stafford, 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 I know Stafford, that's the case. Yeah. And my recommendation on where we need to be with special ed is whatever our local contribution is. So the, the which is 145000 this year. So if we had a year of that local contribution, we could, if we have a huge increase like we did this year, we don't have to find money elsewhere to cover that. There's a little cushion there. Does that clarify that? Mm -hmm. Not really, but we can talk some other time. <laughs> Carl Helm, yeah. Oh, I've talked to him too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I didn't want to be the only one talking. <laughs> so back to this, the special education state aid, that's the flow through money. Not our whole balance, but this part of the, what's budgeted. So the other part I consider um, is the adopted local option budget. Last year we had adopted this, this year we adopted this. So between those two, the top one and the bottom one, what we've submitted as far as our enrollment, our budget to the state is 85,000 more in revenue this year and 47, almost $48,000 extra in revenue. So that's the point I want to make with this is we have some extra revenue coming in, which is general fund revenue. I just said 80 because when they do the audit, we're going to lose a little bit. And then the LOB. Same thing there. I just backed it off a little bit to be conservative because I'm. You know, we will lose a few FDE. That's what, the way it happens. Our situation with the library, between the foundation and the city's extra contributions, that's some more revenue. 
uh, for us there. Uh, there's an aid position. If you recall, we did not fill that position. So all of those things were anticipating an extra $155,000 in revenue this year. Added costs, we know we have our special ed, our local assessment that we pay to the co-op was an extra 15. Health insurance went up. Salary movement was a little bit. Uh, property insurance and workers' comp insurance was significantly higher. Uh, we're also doing the APTA fund, our financial conversion, and our curriculum work. This is important because uh, that's really a one-time expense. The curriculum will be two years, but it won't be that full amount. The APTA fund we're done with, uh, we'll have regular payment for that. That will be an added cost. Uh, down the road, but for this year we're looking at roughly $50,000 more in revenue than we have in added costs. Now, what I haven't included in there is things like the percentage increase for food and uh, natural gas and those things, um, you know, that amounts to $2,000 a year, $4,000 there. I didn't put all of those in there. So, what does all that mean? <coughs> pretty much close that budget hole with our added enrollment. That makes me feel very comfortable. Uh, that should stabilize things. Um, but we do need to do some work to be more efficient. Uh, uh, we can't count on that FDE being that way all the time. Uh, uh, we do have the declining enrollment provision where we can use this year's enrollment for next year's budget, so that helps a little bit as well. So I feel a lot more confident in where we are now than I did at the start of the year when I put the budget together. So uh, I do have a personnel issue that might play into all of this. Um, so I would ask for a uh, executive session for non-elected personnel here, we can discuss that. He's got new ones. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, we can include uh, Mr. Olive as well. Uh, <coughs> President, I move the board going to executive session to discuss personnel matters in order, in order to protect the privacy of non-elected personnel with the board. The superintendent and uh, grade school principal included. And we return to open session in 10 minutes. There a second. Second. We have a second to go an executive session. Uh, for the purpose of non elected personnel with Mr. Meyer, the board, and Mr. Raleigh for 10 minutes. All those are right. Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carried 6 0. Board member activities and reports. I attended a PDC meeting and we have another one coming up this week. Basically they were talking about points, teachers. Am I a voting member or not? Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I didn't vote. <laughs> Carolyn said she was voted, but I didn't vote because I thought I didn't know if I was. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Hold that. Thank you, Barton. Stan? Nothing from me. Uh, myself, looking forward to the state convention Saturday, Sunday. Mr. Meyer's going to attend. Okay, I'm also Saturday. So, moving on to uh, administrative reports. We'll start with Mr. Ollie. Um, we had our student of the month assembly this morning with Chief Saylor. Um, our female student was. <coughs> Michaela Meyer, fourth grader. Uh, male was Gabriella Vara, kindergartner. Um, it's been a while now, but towards the beginning of November, we had the cam fail. Uh, it was called the Pledge Assembly. It was like a little three screen production in the auditorium, kind of had a lot of music and stuff. It was about half an hour long. Um, talked about like pledging to make good decisions, not, you know, pick on other kids and things like that. So. The kids seem to enjoy that. Uh, last Monday before Thanksgiving break, our fifth and sixth graders had their band and vocal motion concert. Several, several of them uh, had either vocal or instrument solos. The, started in the 
a small gym with the band performance, and then they moved into the auditorium for the singing. I thought our kids did a pretty good job with that. Um, administratively, we continue with the school improvement plan. I, I think kind of at our last uh, November, whatever, at the beginning of November, when we had the early dismissal day, we kind of locked down uh, some goals and objectives. By the next month, we should kind of have a school improvement plan in place that I should be able to to share with you. And then I uh, figure the last thing I'll share, Mr. Meyer wanted me to share at the clap. You want me to come up there and hook up sure. the iPad? Um, <clears throat> just something, when I first, turn on, okay. When I first took the job and I was visiting classrooms, um, what I would, whoops, what I would do, is I would go figure out where it's at. There it is. I'd go into with a clipboard, write a bunch of stuff down, go in, then retype it on my computer, and really it wasn't very time efficient. It was, you know, basically doing the, the same work twice. So just kind of created this form that, that saves me a little time going into the classrooms. Um, you just want to do just kind of informal walkthroughs. I just choose, you know, whatever whatever staff member I happen to be in their classroom that day, the day I'm in there, the time I come in, the time I get out, and then I just made a checklist of a bunch of different things that I might observe over the course of that time in there. You know, I don't expect only being in the class for a few minutes to see every single one of those things every single time I'm in there, but over the course of a year and so on, you know, hopefully I see most, if not all, of those things at some different point, and that's, you know, just, I've, I've edited this kind of as I went. I started with a small list, and then I kind of added and took out some things, and just kind of a, you know, constantly a, a work in progress, but, you know, I just click the different things I see during that specific class. Um, you know, I can add some comments, like I, I really liked the project that, the, that your kids were creating, or whatever it happens to do. And then I hit the submit button and it sends it to a spreadsheet for me where I can go in and I can look at the end of the day or the end of the week or whatever. It'll show me all the classroom visits I did and what I saw from each teacher. So that's kind of helped, helped me out a little bit just to be able to, to pull up each individual teacher and just kind of see the different things that some of them are doing. Maybe some of them are doing a lot of the same thing over and over or, you know, mixing it up and so on. So that's all I've got. Good. Thank you, that uh, right there is where, well, if I could uh, have the principal spend uh, every hour of the day in the classroom working with teachers on uh, knowing what's going on in, in the classrooms, um, that'd be ideal, but can't do that. Uh, there's a lot of other things to do, and uh, so that really helps Travis be effective in doing that. In a few minutes, you can kind of see patterns. If we never see technology in one classroom, or we only see certain things every time, uh, and that's not what we want. Uh, and we want to see a lot of different things going on with our kids. It's a pretty neat deal. Uh, move on to your report. Uh, let's hit Mr. Burgens real quick. Uh, Mr. Bergen is uh, on his way home now, I assume, he's from, he's the, come. from the ball game. So, <clears throat> uh, you have the enrollment numbers there. Uh, the Camfell Assembly uh, did the same thing that Travis uh, referred to with uh, uh, the three screen production. It was a, a little louder and a little more high intensity for the older kids. But, uh, we had the high school quiz bowl today. Our varsity team won undefeated. And, uh, did well. Uh, junior high band and choir concert uh, tomorrow evening, Tuesday. Uh, FCCLA uh, sponsored that. They had to roll over a car, uh, simulate that with the highway patrol. Uh, high school basketball is uh, going. Uh, first game on Friday. Junior high has been going for a few weeks now. Things seem to be rolling right along there. Uh, Mr. Burger has a league meeting on Wednesday, and uh, we're going to discuss the uh, student activity account. So there's Mr. Bergen's report. And uh, on my report, 
Uh, our teacher professional development, um, or mentioned the uh, PDC meeting. Um, we're working through a book study now on a volunteer basis. Uh, teachers will go online and type their thoughts on a certain uh, uh, chapter. We can kind of, all the teachers, uh, and there's 14 involved, and uh, type their thoughts, and then we'll get together maybe once a month and discuss it. So that way we don't have to get together all the time. We can still collaborate and discuss it. So that's uh, kind of something new we're trying this year. Um, <clears throat> also on our professional development days, we have January 20th is, is labeled as an all-day in-service. And then February 21 is labeled as half in-service, half work day. Uh, so I've talked with John Bauer, the PDC chair, and uh, Tara Kinneman, she's the uh, 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 LTA, the local teachers union president, about what if we would switch those to be on January, we'll do half and half. In February would be a full day, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. It's a, you know it's a change, but it doesn't affect the kids. So it's just really what we're what the teachers are doing. So I wanted to make sure you guys understood that. Um, teachers are working through and uh, administrators are working through the school improvement plans. Uh, the district leadership team uh, we're required by law to have a uh, site council. Um, we did those in the past and they've kind of gone by the wayside. Mrs. Siefke's uh, kind of put it together with PTO last year. We really need to have site councils and, um, and one of the new board member trainings, uh, I think it was the one we had here, a lot of the questions they asked, uh, Carl was involved in that, were, you know, how do you know what the community wants? How do you know what your parents want? Well, we don't really take we don't have anything specific where people can give input. You know, you all do a great job of talking to people. You hear things, and we do as well. You know, as teachers and administrators, but we don't really have a way to get input from folks. You know, when we're talking about facility improvements. Who are we asking? Uh, and we need some of that. So that's what what we're trying to do here. Is we're going to meet once a quarter. We're going to start that Wednesday. So we'll have an elementary site council, a high school site council. We can get information out to them. Uh, we'll discuss our facility improvements and kind of let folks know that hey, these are the things that are going on and uh, get input from them on what are some things you, you want to see with the district. So uh, we're going to start that process. That's required by law to have? A site council is, yes. What happens if you don't have one? You know what's happened the last few years that we didn't have one? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> so you so developing it's, teams? Uh, uh, yeah, we're, it's not set in stone. Yet, but, yeah. but it is a matter of good practice. That, that we, need to be, we need to have an identified team of folks we can talk to and bounce things off of. Uh, the roofing uh, is all going well. Oh, I missed the board policy audit. We sent information off for that, um, and it's going to be several months before we hear anything. So the information is to them. They'll be working on that. Roofing repairs, uh, I think they'll be done tomorrow. Uh, this uh, this is, yeah, yeah. They were in a hurry today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't want to work uh, on Wednesday and Thursday up there. But uh, things are going great. I think our money uh, with that consultant has been very well spent. Um, keep in mind, this is not a brand new roof. Uh, it's not going to fix every issue we've had. So uh, it's an ongoing maintenance plan. But things will be will be better. Uh, I'm I'm certain that we'll see how that plays out. So. But I've been very happy with the way things have gone uh, up there. Um, the library heating and air, I've talked to three contractors about replacing our equipment here. Um, we can utilize a uh, you know, pre-bid contract, uh, which I wasn't aware there was such a thing for equipment, kind of like we do for our vehicles. You know, there's contracts that are pre-bid. Uh, so we don't need to go through the bid process to do all that. Uh, so that's an option for us to save some time and effort. Um, 
and we'll likely phase this project in. Our boiler's working fine now. Uh, we'll try to take care of the air conditioner as soon as we can, and then uh, maybe the boiler perhaps this summer or something, or uh, the following summer, but we'll probably phase that in. But since we're talking about just replacing equipment that's there, kind of know what's needed, uh, we don't need the design uh, of an engineer and all of that. So. Um, <clears throat> Recruiting and uh, mentoring new staff, this is one of the board's goals and we need to be able to get qualified people here and uh, keep them here. And part of that, we need to be looking at some things with our negotiated agreement. Uh, one thing would be a signing bonus. Uh, if we offer a position to a teacher, that might entice somebody to sign on with us. Maybe uh, uh, these are very non-specific, I don't have all the details. but some things we're working on. Uh, maybe a thousand dollar signing bonus that half would be paid now and half would be paid if they stay for three years or something like that. Um, another thing that might help is to pay some moving expense. Uh, if we can get a teacher hired and get them to move here, uh, that's, uh, especially if they have kids, that's uh, going to be great for us in the long run. Um, we need to have an orientation day. We have new staff in. We have new staff every year. Uh, we would need to add that as uh, onto the contract. You know, if you've been employed in the district, you'll need to come that first day. But if you're new, then you need to be there. So that would be a calendar change. <clears throat> and then uh, we need to have a, a mentoring program. We don't have anything official. I haven't really had a big need for that. But once we get teachers here, we need to make sure they are successful. Uh, and. Uh, continuing to attend career fairs and those things and uh, get out and see people. So that's uh, some of the work we've done there. Uh, try to come up with some specifics and a lot of that will have to go through negotiation. So, uh, staff work day on January 3rd is a half a day on our calendar. So we don't have any kids, nobody comes to work until a Friday, January 3rd, and it's a half a work day. Um, I would like to see us just make that a flexible day. Uh, a lot of our teachers are going to be in over the break, working more than that half day anyway. Uh, we'll be in the office uh, that day, but I would like to just make that a flex day and leave it up to the teachers to put in that half day uh, uh, whenever, and if you're going to do it at home. I'm fine with that. I think that's a good gesture to the to the teachers, and I'm comfortable with that because that's designed for them to get their work done. And they're going to get it done. So if the board's okay with that, uh, I guess if, if we're not okay with that, speak up now. I will let them know on that. And that's all I have for my report. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Anything for executive session? We don't. Um, I do have a um, letter of resignation from Mrs. Lewis. Yeah, we should uh, go ahead and uh, accept that resignation. Okay. How long has Mrs. Lewis been? Um, since 1999. Right. Long time. would be 14 or 15 years. Yeah. Okay. I know there's a position that's opened at the state level. If anybody would like to do that. Motion to accept the resignation of Susan Lewis. I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Susan Lewis. Second. And to clarify, this is the with our transition plan that we discussed earlier. Right. It would have been signed effectively. Correct. She's going to stick around and look at her. Mm -hmm. 
Then move the second to accept the resignation of Susan Lewis. All in favor, aye. Aye. That was nay. Motion carried 7 0. Any other resignation of the contracts? No. Moving on to future agenda items. Superintendent's contract. The principal's contracts on there. Yeah, we've considered their contracts, kind of like we discussed mine today. Um, we'll consider those and see about approving those the following month. Consider items for negotiations. Mm -hmm. Have some discussion on that, and hopefully uh, some information from our architect. Do you have an announcement to make? We about that? have we told Nancy he's on the negotiations team. I heard there was I, just, I told him. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him to pay attention to what he was talking about because he's on the negotiation team. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Uh -huh. yep. yeah. It. It'd be great. What is the position that's on the state level? Jim Austin was calling me about that today. I told her you'd be good at it. And, um, I don't think my political views go with this, yeah. that job. So. Okay, is there anything else to be brought before the board? Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm to be done. Mr. President, I need to adjourn. For a second. Second. Thank you.